Before you take a seat in the, the band, um, I wanted to also teach you all a phrase in Hebrew, and I forgot. <laughs> we throw it out there a lot, but it's hallelujah. And it literally means for us, like it's kind of uh, for us to commend each other to praise God. So when I say hallelujah to you, I'm saying praise God. And so your response should be to praise God, okay? So let's, let's, let's speak a little Hebrew, okay? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's say that again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have a sister at my church. She's like, hallelujah. <laughs> but I'm like, it's all right, girl. We, we know what you mean. <laughs> but I want to encourage you all because many of you may not have made this connection, but our Christian faith, is a cross-cultural and intercultural experience. And so if you haven't recognized that the original languages that we read our holy scriptures in is Hebrew and Greek or Aramaic, and it was a, in, in a, a Middle Eastern culture, and so we read it and we're like, how does it relate to our Western culture? And then the scripture itself says you have good news, so go therefore and make disciples of all nations. And so our Christian faith at its core is intercultural and cross-cultural. And so I want you all to keep that in mind when you're feeling a little uncomfortable with not fully understanding what's happening, but it's okay because in the spirit we know what's happening. And so y'all can have a seat, but stay in, that, stay in that posture of worship. And so I'm up here with my brother Marcos. Many of y'all didn't know he was bilingual, right? Yes, 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 yes. But I'm basically going to recap, and I'm going to sit down and let him talk about 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Where we've been so far is in chapters 10 through 11, commentaries literally believe that this must be like a different letter that's been combined with the first nine because it just abruptly has a change in tone. Paul says God is a God of comfort. God is faithful. The proof is that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. God is faithful. God is powerful. Then he goes on and says that you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Literally, you are a new creation. When God looks at you, he sees the righteousness of Christ. Not your past, not your mistakes, not the things that you, not the lies that you believe, but he sees the righteousness of Christ, of, of Christ upon you. And so he goes on and he says, like, you are so precious to God that you are this earthen vessel. You see this pottery around the room. You are this earthen vessel that has this treasure inside of you, which is the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit within you. And he says, with that Holy Spirit, because remember, our faith is cross-cultural and intercultural. And he says, look, you not only are you holding this great treasure, but you're an ambassador for Christ. An ambassador is a highest-ranking diplomat who represents another country. You are a citizen of heaven, but you're here on earth as an ambassador for Christ. And he goes on and he lists all these things about your identity. And he says, look, your identity, you have all of this simply because you are a child of God. It's nothing that you can earn. It's nothing that you can lose. It's nothing that you can, can even separate you from that love of Christ because you are a child of God. And then he goes on and he's like, look, you're weak. <laughs> like, dang, Paul. He goes on, he's like, look, you're weak because you've been believing lies. I've told you all these great things about your identity, right? And then you let these people come in, these super apostles who got the money and, and they're, they're not struggling and they're, good, they're in good health. And, and, it, and it came in this package that looked like comfort. And it came in this package that looked like I'm in control, right? But you look at Paul, he's not eloquent in his speech, and he's poor because he's not charging them. And, and, and he's like, look, you're looking at these people, and you're allowing them to uh, make you, like, not even believe me and not even believe the God that I, like, brought you to. And he says, look, you want everything to be exactly your way. And so we had chapter 10 and 11, and, and in chapter 11, it was like, look, you now that you have wanted everything to be exactly the way that you've wanted it to be, now you're believing lies. And we had a beautiful, beautiful display of testimonies come up here last week to share of these false narratives that we sometimes believe. And sometimes it's not that we're going to believe another God, but we may believe lies about God. 
and leave li- believe lies about ourselves. So maybe that lie that you are a burden. Maybe a parent made you feel like you were, uh, you know, were getting in the way. And so now you've believed that God doesn't care about these little things in your life because you don't want to feel like a burden or getting in the way of God. Like, God, you have more important things to deal with. You don't have to worry about my test or my grades. Like, why would I even present that to the Lord? Or the lie that God isn't a provider, that he isn't capable of providing, or he's not capable of healing, or he's not capable of answering your prayer. Sometimes we believe these lies about the Lord. And what Paul is wanting them to recognize is that this walk with the Lord is so radical and so countercultural that what you literally may believe is weakness, God can come through and be glorified in that. And so um, Marcos is going to talk a little bit more about how um, through our weaknesses, God can be glorified and can be made strong in our weaknesses. But I wanted to leave this opportunity with you because this is a this is a time of season where we are feeling anxious and stressed out. And um, there I had an opportunity to pray with someone who was sharing how they were just really frustrated that they couldn't get their anxiety under control. And they're just like, I'm doing everything, and it's just so frustrating because no one else is dealing with this, you know? And as I was praying for them, I'm so happy that I was like, Lord, give me words to pray for for your child. And the words that I'm going to paraphrase, but it was, Lord, I pray that we can see this in a new way. Instead of seeing this as a, a disposition that makes us worse off. Can we see this as a unique opportunity to invite you in? So when I'm feeling anxious, I can worship you with taking deep breaths and trying to calm down. And it gives me a unique dependence on you because when I feel anxious, now I can rely on you versus freaking out. And so it it was a really cool way to just say, look, let's look at it in a different way. You may be so frustrated that you're struggling in different areas of your life, but it, it, it reminds us that we need God. And so whatever it is, you start to think about whatever it is that you're just so frustrated with, and you're just like, God, take this away from me, when it reminds us that we're human, and it reminds us that we need God, and we should be relying on him for daily bread, moment by moment, we should be relying on him. And so in those weaknesses, it is an opportunity for us to rely on God. And so I'm going to pass it on over to my brother. All right, all right. So let us start. But before I start, I I do want to say, I want to testify about something really interesting that happened in my life. So can I testify? Yeah, can I testify? All right, let me testify real quick. So I remember, um, many, many of y'all maybe don't know, but I came here in my undergrad. So um, I've been in Kaleo for many years. And uh, maybe through my sophomore, junior, and senior year, I used to sit all the way in the back. No shade, okay? All the way in the back. And I used to complain about how uh, Kaleo was not cool. And I'd be like, man, Kaleo is just boring. Why am I here? Man, I need I, I you know, I, um. Uh, you know, the chapel absences, I, I, you know, I already got all of them through, and, and I have to sit down here and, and all this, and I'm complaining and complaining and complaining, and now I'm here standing in front of all y'all, <laughs> declaring the, Lord, the word of the Lord. So if y'all are complaining, I deserve it. I deserve it because, uh, you know, what can I say? The Lord does great things, and he's funny. So just watch out when y'all complain. Just letting y'all know. Do not complain and not expect something crazy to happen. But let's get into this uh, scripture, all right? Let's get into the scripture. Uh, but before we get into it, um, I do want to say that we're going to give, I'm going to give you a little bit of context of what's going on. But uh, within that, we're going to jump into chapter, I mean, to verse 7 through 10. And we're going to go into it in deep, all right? So we're going in verse 1 in chapter 12. Uh, verse 1, right? 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. And Paul is, is just speaking about boasting and visions and revelation. And he's doing it because 
uh, these super apostles are doing these things where they're saying, man, we've seen visions. We're doing all these great things. And Paul's like, man, I've already told you. I was like Pastor Tatiana was saying, I already told you, like, these guys, these people are lying to you. I'm telling you the truth. But you know what? If y'all want revelation, I'll give you some revelation. If y'all want visions, I'll give you some vision. Let me tell you what happened 14 years ago. And he goes in. He's like, I went to the third heaven. Where did the super apostles go? All right? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So he's like, I went to the third heaven, and I'm doing all these things. And he's talking about he saw and he heard, and he can't talk about these things. And he's giving you a description of what happened. But at the end of the day, he says, I do not want to be known for that. Matter of fact, it doesn't even matter. I want to be known for who I am. And I want to be known for what I do. You see, if God is not glorified, it doesn't matter. So let's get into the scripture, and let me read verse 7. So if you guys have your Bibles, or if you guys want to read around, oh, there's no, okay, there we go. There we go. If you want to read with me, uh, let's read. So it says, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations, therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that I will leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the most gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. Yes, amen. You see, he tells us about this revelation. And Paul had a thorn in his life that kept him from flexing on these apostles. He's like, man, I could flex on these men. I can, man, you don't even know. But you see, that's not the purpose. And the Lord made it known for him. And it prevented him from, from feeling proud, from feeling conceited, because that was not the point. And let me tell you a little story about my thorn. You see, as you guys just heard a couple of minutes ago, I speak Spanish. I come from Mexico, and so I speak Spanish. I mean, I mean, uh, I speak Spanish, and and you know, it's it's it's, it's a hard thing because also, if you guys don't know, I'm African American, so it's really hard because they call me sometimes halfy, half and half. I'm not too much this one. I'm not too much that one. So every time I'm trying to relate with people in my high school days and even in college, I struggle because I just did not feel like I could be. One or the other, like I feel like I was trying to be one, but people say, well, no, you're not, you know, you're not black. I'm like, okay, well, but we're Mexican people. No, you're not Mexican enough. I'm okay. Well, what am I? What am I? You see, it was so hard that even the language barrier struggled for me, and I was uh, self-conscious about that. I hated school. Matter of fact, I still don't like school. But <laughs> I hated school. Because it just made me feel weak. It made me feel like I didn't know nothing. So I became a know-it-all. Do you know those people? I'm one of them. I'm a know-it-all. I will tell you everything you're wrong about. Because I was afraid of always, uh, when I speak, I will say a, a, a word incorrectly. When I write, I will not write well. And so it just was just showing a piece of me that I was just afraid of. And I did not want to be part of that. And so it made me feel inadequate still as I'm in seminaries. I, 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 in seminary, I feel like I'm inadequate a lot of times, and I feel like I'm not, you know, meeting my potential, I would say. But through this weakness, the Lord has helped me endure and humble myself, reminding me that I do not know everything. And since I've been in seminary, a lot of times I say, but didn't the Lord say this? And I'm like, well, let's, let's, let's look at it with context. I'm like, man, I got that wrong. And I started realizing that a lot of the things I was doing, and I was just doing it for being proud. I was doing it because I wanted to seem like I was great. You know, I'm like, maybe I don't speak English well, but I can tell you everything you do wrong. Right? But that's not good. 
You see, Christ strengthens me. He strengthens me and he helps me. So I want to say something. If, if this story does not relate to you, well, guess what? I will give you some examples from the scripture that will relate. All right? So we have Moses who struggled with speaking. We all know that he could not speak. He struggled. And so we know that that was a thorn. But what about Gideon, the warrior, who comes from Manasseh, a small little weak tribe who nobody saw but did mighty things? What about David, who was too young and was the youngest of all, but he fought Goliath? What about Samson? Uh, he was too conceited and too confident. Elijah was scared to die, and Peter denied Jesus. But you know what is the beautiful thing about all that? That all that, through the power of God and the glory of God, they were able to do great things and amazing things, and it was not them who did it, but it was the Lord who did it, so he can do great things through you so that everyone may know who Yahweh is. You see, Paul in verse 8 asked the Lord three times, take it away from me. But I'm going to tell you two things that the Lord says. The first, he said, my grace is sufficient. Let's change it to enough. My grace is enough for all of you. I'm talking to all of you. God's grace is enough for all of you. So when you're asking, Lord, take it away, rather say, Lord, give me grace. I need that grace. I need that help. Because the Lord is not going to give you more, he's not going to give you less, but he's going to give you enough so he can do his great thing in you. You see, the second part is the power of God is made perfect in weakness. Now let's switch that word perfect and let's put completeness. God's power is made complete in your weakness. Complete. Whole. In everything. So you see, God's thorn is a reminder that God will humble us so we will not be considered or flex on people when God does great things. Because we tend to do that a lot. We hear a pat on the back and say to us, oh, how great uh, you are. And you're like, yeah, I am. But then, then the Lord reminds you, no, nah, it's me who does it. It also prevents the spirit of comparison. You see, the thorn reminds us that we all struggle. Not one person here, I can say, that does not struggle because we all struggle. You see, it was through his loving son, Jesus Christ, that we are a new creation. So now let me tell you something. When you are struggling because you're not a ministry major, or when you are struggling because you're not smarter than that other person, or strong, or don't write like them, or speak like that other person, or have medical struggles and the other person is not. That is not for you to look at it as something that God did to hurt you, to make you look bad, to say that I did not love you, to say that I did not care for you. It is a thorn to remind you that you need to rely on the Lord Jesus Christ so he can do great things through you because he did it with all the people in the Gospels. As I was preparing today, the Lord revealed something amazing to me. And I'm going to end with this. The Lord Jesus Christ in his struggle, the Lord Jesus Christ in his biggest weakness, as he was praying to the Lord, our Father, to take away the cup. He said, then, is not my will, your will be done. And the cross was the moment in his, to in his total weakness, in the moment that he was frail, in the moment that he couldn't move, in the moment that he was hurting. And in those moments, he was still thinking of you, saying that I want to die for you so that in your weakness, I may be made perfect. This is the thing what I'm trying to say to you, okay? And I said that totally wrong. If you guys hear that, I just said I may be perfect, but it's the Lord Jesus Christ's perfections. I may be well, yeah, you got it. All right. Yeah, sorry. I got over hyped over here. This is what I'm trying to say. 
If the Lord Jesus Christ suffered in his weakness, what makes you think that you cannot? If the Lord suffered in his weakness, what makes you think that you cannot? And that's what happened to me. As I was reading this, I was saying, Lord, forgive me because I always complain about me having two languages and not being able to speak well. And he's saying, well, what makes you think that I'm not using that to do great things so other people may believe in me? So what makes you think that the struggles that you're going through, the thorn that you have in your life, the Lord is not using it so that you may be able to help other people be freed from their struggles, be freed from the, from the fear that whatever the thorn is, is not the Lord's will to help you do other great things for other people. So I want to help you guys to be reminded that God is redeeming us all for the purpose of the gospel. So let us live daily, okay, daily, knowing that the thorn is not something that is stopping us, but something that is allowing us to seek God. So before I pray, can I bring um, the I Chapel? Uh, sorry, the, uh, the international band. Sorry, I will forget about the international child. Sorry, international band up. <laughs> Yeah, that was foul. <laughs> and let us pray real quick. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we know that through your death, through your resurrection, we are affirmed that you are king that you are the only one. Through you, we receive joy and we receive the Holy Spirit. And we live with joy. And we live in our weakness so that we may be strong. Thank you. Thank you because we don't need to try. Thank you because we don't need to become we just abide on you. May all those who hear, let them hear. And may the hearts of those who received, receive. And those who are still trying to figure out, Lord God, speak to them, lead them, and be with them. Let us continue to adore you and proclaim you and sing praises to you. New songs that only you and the Lord know. I just pray this and declare this and proclaim this in the name of our King, Jesus Christ. Amen. How many of us believe that God is good and he is faithful? I know right now I'm coming from a place of a lot of stress and a lot of just things that I wish weren't happening. I, f I kind of feel lost in a lot of different aspects of my life right now. And um, all I know is that God is faithful. And in the times of waiting and when I don't feel like he's here, he is. And I don't know what place you guys are in right now, what issues you're coming in with. But all I know is when we feel that he is the farthest, he is right there, right next to us. And in the time of waiting, when we don't feel him, is when miracles can happen. If we just continue to trust him and continue to have faith in him, that he's going to work miracles. And I believe that. I believe that with all my heart. And that's what's getting me through this season. And if you're going through a season that's similar to mine. A thought that just came to mind of sometimes with us surrendering, sometimes it's painful. But I want us to be encouraged by the hope that you will experience joy because in the surrender, you will be in the will of God. In the surrender, you will be all that God has created you to be. And so you will experience joy. And so I, I think that should be an encouragement for some people because it's like you're fighting it right now because you're fearful that you won't enjoy what God is calling you to. And I want to tell you that's a lie. 
Like literally, someone in here needs to, to hear that stepping into your will and stepping, in, and stepping into your call will be the place that you experience peace. It will be the place that you experience joy. When you're feeling like, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be suffering, I'm going to be a martyr, you're just thinking the worst. When God's like, no, when you surrender, like, that's where I've literally created you to be. And so for some of you that may be healing, for some of you that may be the career and call that you're fighting against, but whatever it is, there's like, I'm experiencing joy. I wouldn't have chose Kaleo. I seriously, I wouldn't have. And I'm experiencing so much joy with seeing you all worship the Lord. Like seriously, I'm going home and not being able to go to sleep for hours because I am excited about what God is doing in your lives. And I wouldn't have chose this for myself. And so what God has for you before the foundations of the world is better than what you would choose for yourself. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that what you have in store for us and what you have had in store for us before the foundations of the world, before our parents knew we existed, is better than what we would choose for ourselves. I am so thankful that you are a God that loves us and pursues us because you desire for us to be our whole and complete selves in your will and in the call you have for our lives. And so, Lord, we just thank you that your love sometimes seems reckless because you keep pursuing us after we fail you time and time again. I thank you that you pursue us because we're worth it to you. Prince of Peace, give us peace and surrender. Let us empower you to do the work that you are desiring, have been desiring to do in our lives. But it requires an open hand. And so we, we love you, Lord. We thank you for this sweet, sweet time in worship. And I pray that we're reminded that this sweet experience is not confined to this space that we take it into the classroom, that we take it into our living spaces, that we take it into morning chapel, that we take it into our workspaces, that we take it everywhere we go. This sweet peace in your presence is not confined to this space. Lord, help us to take it everywhere we go. And so we love you, Lord. And we give all of these post-it notes and even those who are too afraid to put it up there, we give it to you. In Jesus' name, amen.